Avinash says, how did life evolve from non-living matter? And Swapnil says, can you please explain the Miller-Urey experiment which gave rise to the field of prebiotic chemistry? Okay, so these two questions are interrelated. It's about life. It's called abiogenesis, the chemical origin of life, the emergence of life possibly from non-living matter, right? So this experiment was done in the US uh, in the 1950s. Hmm? Two guys, Miller and Yuri, I believe. So what they were doing, they were testing the possible chemical origin of life. So we know that the earth formed about four and a half billion years before today, roughly. And it was a very different place at that time. It was a very hot ball of extremely hot molten rock and all. There was a lot of lot of vol volcanism. The composition of the atmosphere was, was very different from what it is today. There was a lot of lightning and so on and so forth. So they tried to recreate that environment in this experimental apparatus, right? So what they did was um, they took a flask with methane, CH4, ammonia, NH3, and hydrogen, which is H2, and a different flask with water, which is H2O. They come, they, they interlink the two, and they heated the water to create vapor, steam, and they also had a spark plug in there, which would create electrical sparks all the time to, to recreate the lightning scenario of the early Earth. And they let this run for a certain period of time. And what they found is that a number of amino acids were formed from this procedure. I don't know how long the experiment ran. Maybe, I don't know, a week or so. I'm not sure. Look it up. It, it ran for a certain amount of time. And these very simple ingredients that, was, that they started off with eventually formed a number of amino acids. Amino acids. So these are organic compounds that are, that are, the, that are the building block of life. Amino acids give rise to proteins. Proteins is what we have in our in our body, it's the foundation of all life on the planet. So I think what they found at the time was five or so amino acids, but later on, many decades later, when it was reanalyzed, they found well over 20 different amino acids. So that's what the uh, experiment was. I'm sure we can look it up and uh, let me see what the apparatus looks like. Uh, miller Yuri experiment. Let me um, share the screen. So what did this apparatus look like? Yeah, so this is the experimental apparatus that they had. There is one flask with water, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen, and a different place, a different flask, which is connected to this, which has boiling water on a heat source. It's giving off uh, water vapor. And there is an, uh, an arrangement for creating an electrical spark. And you run this for a certain amount of time, and then what you get is all of these amino acids that, that emerge out of this experiment. So that, in brief, is the Miller-Urey experiment. And uh, yeah, that is one potential way in which life or, or, the, or the building blocks of life could have emerged in the very early Earth. This is abiogenesis, prebiotic chemistry, and so on. So that is possibly one scenario in which life evolved from non-living matter. Could this, if you if you keep it going, could it give rise to DNA molecules? We don't know. I don't think anybody's been able to uh, to to uh, successfully induce the creation of DNA or RNA molecules in such an experiment. So that is one mystery because all life on Earth. It does come off, come out of these building blocks, amino acids, etc. But all life on Earth, whether it is the most complex organisms like human beings and apes and whales and all that, or whether it is the dinosaurs, the lizards, or even if you go down to the microscopic level, bacteria, viruses, whatever you have, all life on Earth has DNA. Right? So where did this, where did this DNA come from? That's the main big real question. So there is this... Uh, Panspermia theory, which says that DNA came from outer space, because when we when we analyze various uh, meteorite samples, rocks that have fallen from the sky in the form of meteorites, we often find signatures of life on these meteorites. You know, organic compounds. Maybe even I'm not sure if they have found amino acids, but possibly, yeah. 
So we know that uh, there is a lot of water on various comets. We know that there are organic compounds in these comets and asteroids. It is possible that something else may also be have been there in the past. Who knows? So there is one theory, but there is no evidence for this theory, the, the panspermia, panspermia theory, that life came from outer space. But it is a possibility. So we don't quite know, as of today, we don't quite have the answers. How did life evolve from non-living matter? One possible answer is the Miller-Urey experiment, but it doesn't answer the question of the DNA. Where did DNA come from? Where did that emerge from? So as of today, we have more questions than answers, but it's good. It means there is a lot of scope for further research and progress.